Okay, at the front you've got your hitch, your electrical connections, which in this case is a seven pin flat plug and an Anderson plug for charging. You've got your chains, which attach via crossover. Plus you've got your breakaway system, your brakes, which will just pull the pin and automatically put the brakes on to stop the trailer if the worst should happen. Uh, make sure that's connected to something other than the hitch, uh, just in case your hitch breaks on the car, then the brakes will engage. Um, the 750 series jockey wheel we've got here, just to show you how to wind this up. Once you've attached, wind that up, make sure the wheels are facing outwards, pin locates so the wheels move, remove the handle, put it somewhere safe, not on the floor next to you, lift it up and out of the way and then rotate so it's completely clear of the floor. At the front while we're here as well, uh, obviously you've got your handbrake and your water connections for the ensuite. Put your cold feed in and your gas bayonet as well. So at the front here we've got our gas bottles. Open, drop down the door, and then release and you can slide out your gas bottles for when you need to change over. Um, we've got a 9 and a 4.5. Just make sure that's locked in place when you put it back in. Then we've got our fridge slider. Open that up, you've got fan and light just here. Make sure the fan isn't on while you're driving, uh, it's not necessary. Um, just for when that door's closed and the fridge is on. And the fridge slider, one handle operation. Pull it all the way out. Any fridge you put in here, just make sure it's lashed down properly with these lashing points um, so it doesn't bounce around when you're going off-road. And then make sure it's locked back in place when you put it back in. The pantry we've got here, it's unlocked. Pull it all the way out, locks in place, so just make sure you push down to put it, push it all the way back in and make sure that it's locked when you push it back in so that it doesn't move when the door's closed. You've also got your pantry light there over the top. Inside here we've got your electrical panel. So your mains cut off will cut off all your 12 volt. Um, also you've got a 50 amp breaker here. So if you get any problems, just check that breaker first. See if that's tripped out. And then you've got individual circuit breakers here and switches for all your, your individual circuits. Coming around to the kitchen. When you're opening the kitchen, pull the locks and then lock them in place. Make sure they're well away from the latch up, turn, and then pull the kitchen out by the handle. From there, open up the kitchen like so. Top bit first, that should fold down automatically, giving you nice support for this back section. Then you've got your burner and wind deflector, those in place, your drainage and the tap. Also, you've got this extra table on the side. Just make sure that's packed away and locked in place before you put it away. In reverse, Put the tap down, drainer, wind deflector, fold that over. When you put it away, because the locks are, are locked and out of the way, they won't catch on the bottom, turn and lock it into position. And at the back here we've got your pole box, or your poles should be in there 
completely stored away. There's room for a bit of extra in there as well. Around this side, you've got the other end of the pole box. Your battery compartment. Your fresh water fill, so that's a, a low pressure fill for, for your rear and front tanks. And then your mains water connection. So when you go to a campsite, um, you can just put the hose straight into that, you've got mains water going straight to the van. And then, then your 240 connection, which is a 15 amp 240 connection. You can get a, um, a breaker box that will take that from your 15 amp connection here to your 10 amp connection in your house. If you need to, you need to buy a special lead for that. Then you've got your 240 charger bus breaker. If you get any problems with 240 going into the van, that's your first port of call is check that breaker, make sure that's been tripped out, and then check the breaker that's on the other end of this lead as well. Further round, you've got another storage compartment. This is where the aircon normally goes, but in this case, there isn't any aircon, so you've got a nice big drawer for a bit of extra storage. Again, same thing with the lock in, make sure it's locked when it's back in. And then you've got your storage slash generator compartment. Going inside, we've got your 12 volt connections, um, 12 volt socket plus USB. Three drawers, quite a nice size underneath the bed. Your multimedia player and a 240 volt socket. The bed with lighting, all dimmable. Uh, the little reading lights at the side of the bed aren't dimmable. A little spotlights for reading but your light above the bed is dimmable by the switch next to the bed also then lights above the bed also dimmable via that switch your second bed uh, which is a double at the back with also lighting that's dimmable just on the side there and if you want a backrest for the people seating here pull up the panel and then lock it off on both sides so that the panel holds itself up. First of all to pack away you have to remove the six spreader bars in this expander which are in, at the top in each corner. This one, this one, this one and the two over the bed as well. To do this, you release this latch, like so. Slide the bar in, latch cross, and remove the bar to go back into the bag. So first of all, what we've got to do is release the poles to drop them down a little bit. You just release these at each side, and then pull the poles down. And then do them back up. Make sure you do do these back up so they don't break off. And do that on each each one. These two over dead center and over the bed can be done from the inside. The ones at the back can be done from the outside. Just remember to move all the cushions from the seating area before you slide the bed in to ensure no damage occurs to the cushions. Okay, now to start packing up, make sure that everything is unraveled. Don't have anything bunched up like this because it will cause a problem with the poles and probably bend them. Um, unclip all these and then unzip the door, the window. Also behind the rams, make sure that's folded up inside the camper. Hmm? 
And then from here, what we can do is release these poles to drop them down. We're going to do that on both sides and at the back. I'll go around the other side and drop them down. So just worth noting, once you've dropped these down, fold this canvas underneath the mattress and then pay attention to this cable because when you fold this all up, that could get snagged um, and damage the cable. So just pay attention to that cable when you're folding this away. So it'll probably take two of you to do this. Um, before you put this slider in, you're gonna have to take away these support poles. So you just get something to lift it up slightly. <coughs> the poles will fall out, clip them in place. On both sides with the canvas, both these sides out and detached, and unzip on the, uh, the sides and the bottom. And then from there, once you've released these poles, push the rear bed in, watching for this cable inside here. Just make sure you're keeping an eye on that. So it doesn't snag on anything. Pushed in and clip in place. Okay. And then we can put the rear wheels up. Okay, so just to make sure before you fold this up that everything is as flat as it possibly can be. These sides, push them over, just spend a little bit of time arranging it to make sure you've got it as flat as possible and there's nothing really bunched up and so everything will fold down on itself and not cause any damage. And then what we'll do, put the door up. If you forget to do that, then you'll be opening it back up again. So release the, uh, the winch, because what we're going to do is attach the winch to the front so that you can pull the, pull the, uh, the top down. And then clip it onto the front. Okay, and then you just Release the front winch. And unwind it until it's sort of supporting itself. Then you can actually detach this winch if you want to. You can leave that attached until it's fully closed. But seeing as that's self-supporting now, you can detach it. Then you go back to the rear winch. And start winding this in. And what that does is just pull it over. When you get to that top point, just take five minutes to rearrange the canvas, make sure that the tropical roof bar is flat, and again, that all the canvas is as flat as it can be. Keep tucking the canvas in all around while you're pulling the roof down and winding the winch in. It's a lot better to have two people to do this, but it can be done with one. Make sure as you go that all the canvas is tucked in and the clips are firmly down. You can do two clips at a time to assist you with this if you need to. So just make sure that both your winches are completely secure, not left like this. 
You just secure that for me, Wally, while I'm. And then they're nice and tight. So there we have it, the Emu Expander Mark II, all ready for its new adventure with you. Hope you enjoy.